Hey folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com and today I'm asking the elite pros questions that you submitted on our forums. Let's see what they have to say. Hey Chris, I've got some questions for you that users have submitted to us, members cool. have submitted to us yeah. on our forums. Yeah. And uh, let's, let's jump right into that. Yeah, no, okay? awesome website. I do Google searches all the time and your website pops up all the time. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate yeah. that. So uh, Sean from Columbus, Alabama, he says, yes, what would you say you do during prep practice or tournament day that sets you apart from the other anglers? Man, hands down, uh, Sean, uh, it's a good question. Hands down, I'm always on my phone looking at maps, looking at tournament results, local tournament results. I mean, we just had a, a, a lunch in here and uh, we're at media day and I was looking at, you know, the la latest tournament results and there was a local tournament out here on Lake Conroe last weekend. You know, it's, it's always good to know what's going on around you. Um, aerial photos, you know, satellite imaging, I'm all constantly on that stuff, constantly on it. And I know, you know, some guys are starting to use it, but I mean, I, I go, be, you know, above and beyond. I zoom into every little high spot, low spot. Uh, anything I think could help me, um, you know, I'll use it. I'll take these screenshots and use them as notes out on the water. So I definitely use all those satellite maps, um, you know, the Navionics app, stuff like that. And I use that stuff all the time. My wife gets mad at me when I'm in bed at night and I'm looking at this thing and, and uh, that's all right. She could have her social media. I'll, I'll have the maps. <laughs> you know, it's funny you mentioned that because it is a little more difficult to get used to looking at satellite images and finding small things like beaver huts. You know, they, you. They don't, they're, not, they're not readily apparent, are they? No, they are not. They, they really aren't. Um, you know, beaver huts, you know, that's, that's, that kind of stuff changes every year. But I like to look at uh, like, you know, uh, you know, like mountain structures, stuff like that, that are way up on the hillside or whatever it might be uh, a lot of times I look to, I look for little drains little drains that that and, and, and satellite imaging shows you that kind of stuff a lot of times a lot of times you could pick out drains um, basically when I mean what I mean by a drain is when it rains where all that flow ends up into the lake and basically what that does is it brings all these nutrients into the lake and it brings life to that creek or that cut whatever it might be so what I like to do is I like to look for those shadows those drains those cuts and a lot of times you'll see uh, real green trees spotted along there and that tells you it gets a lot of water flow especially when we get down in the gulf down here when we're fishing brackish water salt water type intrusion uh, uh, you know deltas or whatever it might be um, all you gotta do is look for the green trees on the satellite map and there's your freshwater inflow and that's where the bass are gonna be smart real smart yeah. nice good advice guys pay attention to that one well Kevin we've got some questions from some people on our forums that want want some questions from you so I'm gonna ask them is okay. that right yeah let's do it all right let's go uh, Sean from Columbia Alabama he says what would you say you do during prep practice or tournament day that sets you apart from the other anglers well, the one thing that I always try to do is control all the variables that I can. So, you know, making sure that your equipment's ready, you change your line, I change, you know, replace ho treble hooks, things like that. Try to get everything organized in the boat so it's going to maximize my time on the water on the competition day. So those are all variables that I can control. You want to look at the weather forecast so you can have a game plan for the day. And again, I want to make sure that all my equipment is ready and prepared for even something that may come up during the day. So I want to have those options ready just so I can save time. I mean, the more casts that you can make, the better your chances um, to beat the competition for sure. So what, what unique thing do you do you feel is unique to what you do in prepping and getting your boat organized and ready for a tournament? It, it is. It's, um, I'm really lucky to have Plano as a, as a sponsor because they have every option possible for my tackle you know i mean if you got crankbaits jerkbaits spinnerbaits plastics whatever it is i've got a great system that keeps me organized so i know exactly if i'm looking for uh, a kvd 1.5 and sexy shad i know exactly which box it's in and where to go you know get it if i'm looking for a bag of um, rage craws and green pumpkin you know i know right where they're at in my boat and I can get to them quickly. So knowing where everything's at and being able to access it quickly and being organized, not just having everything in a jumbled mess is critical to save time on the water. Absolutely, you get more casts, you spend more time fishing you, than just digging around efficiency. your tackle box. You wanna be efficient. What would you say you do during prep, practice, or tournament day that sets you apart from other anglers? 
I would say the biggest thing is uh, decision making, you know, knowing when to bail on a certain technique or an area that's not working and knowing when to stay and wait those fish out and having an understanding of really what those fish are doing and where they're going or where they're coming from to be able to make those adjustments when weather conditions or uh, fishing pressure, whatever it may be that changes those fish. Mm -hmm. So how would you know when to make that change? Uh, it's really just all an instinctual thing and it, I rely and lean on all of the homework that I've done uh, previously. So that goes into pre-practice and your practice when tournament time comes around to have the confidence to make those decisions and not second guess yourself. And that's the best thing you can do. If your gut you know, tells you that you need to leave or if your gut says stay here, the fish are coming, that's what you need to do because at least you're not second guessing yourself at that point. Yeah, makes total sense, absolutely. So it sounds to me it's, it's really before you even get on the water, it's all the, the, the research that you do and, and really exactly. learning a body of water before you've even seen it as much as you can, yes. then applying that when you get on the water. Yeah, exactly. Having all of that homework and that information is what's going to help build those, um, that ground or that foundation for making those decisions when it comes time to actually apply the situation. That sets you apart from the other anglers. I move around more in practice and less in the tournament. I cover a tremendous, a tremendous amount of water in practice. Uh, not necessarily looking for bites, but we're looking for productive areas. So I think at the end of the practice, when you look at the amount of water I cover, I've had people ride before and say, dude, you probably cover more water in one day than I've covered in months. You know, so I'm constantly on the move just looking because I want to know what all my options are before the tournament starts. I, you know, I can attest to that. Being in the boat with you yeah. during pre-practice, we did go everywhere. Everywhere. And you covered a lot of, I mean, deep, shallow I mean what's just, what's the methodology do you approach I just kind of I kind of junk fish around and see what the fish are, are kind of doing you know I may fish a, a jig deep and eight to ten foot and then I may bounce something flip it on the bank but I'm trying to fish till I get that bite or two that says okay that's the deal right there and I think for me to do that I have to offer uh, uh, several different techniques and baits but when I see it then I immediately start putting stuff up and I, I zoom in and I hone in right on that area that sets you apart from the other anglers uh, I would just say that preparation in general, um, you know, I feel like has been a big key for me. Knowing where everything that I own is at all times, uh, when I need a bait, I know exactly where it's at. I spend a lot of time in the off season getting ready and, and making those preparations so that throughout the year, things flow a lot more smoothly for me. Uh, you can look in my truck right now, it's quite a bit cleaner than some of these other guys around here. So I feel like that helps me mentally, um, you know, probably more than anything else, honestly. So being organized, being able to find that bait right when you need it, you spend more time fishing, is that this yeah, concept? That, that and just, you know, and, and also keeping stuff simple. I mean, uh, you know, knowing what I'm good at and, and the techniques that I typically do well at. Uh, you know, I, I love to be a versatile angler, but at the same time, there's certain things that I fall back on that I just feel comfortable doing. And I try and find those bites. And uh, this year I got off track on that a little bit uh, at the first tournament at Cherokee. But, you know, hey, we got to keep living and learning. Uh, never going to stop learning in this game. So take that experience as, as much as a you know good tournament, learn from it, and uh, you know go on. But definitely keeping your choices simple, staying organized. Uh, those those are two things for me that are high on my priority list. Makes total sense. Yeah. That sets you apart from the other anglers. Um, I don't I don't know if it sets me apart because I think there's a few guys that are a lot like me. I would say the biggest thing is is I keep it simple. I mean I. I have a rotation of baits that I that I look for in practice because I feel like if I win, it's going to be on one of my confidence baits, and that's how I try to find them. And and I just don't. I try. I, I can't say I don't because sometimes I get into that overthinking. But the biggest thing is you don't want to overthink it. I mean, you're fishing for a fish, and and you know he's not all that smart. You know, if he's there, he's probably going to bite. Um, but you just don't want to overthink the process, and, and I try to do that in a tournament, and it's easy to sit here and talk about it. It's a lot easier said than done, but I try. I always try to do that. I mean, you can ask, you know, Edwin stays with me, or I stay with Edwin, however you want to say it, and and I think if, if you ask him about me, I think he would just say simple, maybe a little stubborn, but simple. So just try not to overthink things is what I'm hearing. Right, yeah, you yeah. just uh, don't, don't make it a science. Don't try to put a formula behind it. Just 
you use your gut and you know just just go fishing sometimes a lot of fishermen uh, the weekend fishermen they try to make it a science you know that fish was in 2.7 feet of water on a shady bank I caught him on a frog I can run everywhere that's 2.7 no he was in 2.7 2 because he was, you know, he might have been in the shade or, or he was just there. You, you may catch them from one to four. I mean, it just don't overthink it. Just keep it simple. Watch that part over again, guys. That makes total sense. Yeah. And there you have it. Great questions from the pros answering your questions that were submitted on the forums on BassResource.com. For more videos like this, check out our YouTube channel or visit BassResource.com.